In 1791, the Scottish poet Robert Burns wrote the poem Flow Gently, Sweet Afton, about a pastoral river in his native country. It was 1857 when the village of South Bainbridge took its new name from that very poem. Located halfway between Oneonta and Binghamton, the town of Afton embraces the Susquehanna River. First settled in 1792, the area is rich in history. In 1827, the Mormon church founder Joseph Smith and Emma Hale were married at the Tarbell Homestead, now known as the Mormon House. The Afton Museum, located on Main Street, preserves and shares the history of this historic community. Once a quaint house and barn, the museum is now filled with exhibits focused on Native American Indian artifacts, Civil War items, farming equipment, and much more. The museum also houses a number of artifacts associated with Joseph Smith, including a mantelpiece from the old Mormon house. Here in Afton, where the Susquehanna flows gently and local history comes alive, is another important stop on New York's path through history. The arts are an important element in the history and heritage of a community. The mission of the Shenango Arts Council is to support life-enriching art throughout the greater Shenango region and to facilitate the discovery of art in everyday life. Located in the restored and repurposed Norwich High School building, art galleries, and an elegant 500-seat theater now fill the space where former classrooms and an auditorium once existed. Two galleries provide professional exhibition space and showcase several exhibits throughout the year. The Arts Council also offers instructional classes, including design workshops and a summer art camp for students. In addition to exhibitions, live performance, and instructional workshops, the Arts Council supports the growth and development of the local arts by awarding grants to artists and organizations. Shenango Arts Council in Norwich, an artful blend of past and present on New York's path through history. Over 50 years ago, an abandoned school building in Norwich found new purpose. It was then that the Shenango County Historical Society acquired Ward School No. 2 on Rexford Street for use as a museum. Renovation began immediately on the 1896 building, and soon the museum opened with exhibits spanning the Revolutionary War period to the early 19th century. The Shenango County Historical Society Museum has continued to expand over the years. Today, the museum includes major exhibits on the Shenango Canal, Native Americans, Mormons in Shenango County, and the internationally known Norwich Pharmacal Company. Other collections include displays on early telecommunications, photography, and pioneer and Victorian life. A one-room schoolhouse and maple sugar shack are included on the museum grounds, and a history research center is located next to the museum building. Half a century ago, a landmark building in Norwich was saved and rehabilitated. Today, just like each of the exhibits within its rooms, the museum itself is a piece of local history on display at this stop on New York's path through history. Located in Norwich, the Northeast Classic Car Museum first opened in 1997 with an exhibit of 50 vintage automobiles. The collection consisted of cars primarily manufactured by the Franklin Automobile Company of Syracuse, and each had been meticulously restored by local owner and collector George Staley. Today, thanks to generous donations, the collection has grown to over 160 vintage automobiles and fills five connected buildings. A carpeted walkway leads visitors through several themed exhibits where classic car models like the Franklin, the Pierce Arrow, Auburn, Maxwell, DeLorean, and others greet guests as they explore the museum. The Northeast Classic Car Museum, where sculpted hood ornaments, streamlined Art Deco styles, space age tail fins, and lots of chrome, bring fond memories and a new appreciation for automotive design on New York's path through history. Along the once busy Shenango Canal at the border of Shenango and Madison counties, the village of Earlville prospered in the mid-19th century. Today, painted Lady Victorian homes line village streets, and the historic three-story brick Earlville Opera House stands central to the community. Built in 1892, the Opera House provided an essential venue for entertainment and community functions. Like most theaters, it evolved over the years in response to changing tastes. It originally hosted lavish theatrical productions, then vaudeville acts, and eventually motion pictures. Declining attendance finally forced the theater to close in the 1950s. 
Then in 1971, a group of concerned citizens developed a plan to bring the Opera House back to life. Two years later, the building was listed on the National Register of Historic Places, and in 1975, the fully restored Opera House was once again open for business. Earlville's Opera House soon regained its former status of providing top-notch performing arts entertainment. The pride of the community, Earlville Opera House represents historic preservation at its finest. It stands today as an example of this community's passion for its past and as a major landmark on New York's path through history. To enter the business district in green is to take a step back in time. Named after Revolutionary War hero General Nathaniel Green, the town of Green was formed in 1798. Located along the Shenango River, the town prospered along with the construction of the Shenango Canal and later a railroad line. Listed on the National Register of Historic Places since 1982, the Green Historic District includes over 140 buildings, including the main commercial area and surrounding residential neighborhoods. The main street through town is lined with magnificent 19th century buildings filled with quaint specialty shops, stores, cafes, and restaurants. The 1886 Municipal Building stands as one of the area's most prominent landmarks, as does the majestic Sherwood Hotel, built in 1913 and restored to its current glory in 1982. A visit to the Green Historic District is like a step back in time on New York's path through history. Located just across the Shenango River in the picturesque village of Green is the Julian House. Built in 1810 by French seaman Joseph Julian, the 22-room house is an excellent example of early 19th century federal-style architecture. There are many legends associated with the Julian House. It is believed that during its early years, Indians visited the house and spent nights in the center hall. And there is also some evidence that the house may have operated as a stop on the Underground Railroad in the mid-1800s. 200 years after it was built, the home was converted into a bed and breakfast, where visitors can now experience warm, cozy accommodations in a quiet, relaxed 19th century setting. For over two centuries, many important individuals have passed through this grand home, including French settlers, Native American Indians, fugitive slaves, and abolitionists. Today, the 1810 Julian House stands as a significant landmark in Shenango County and an important place for travelers to stop and rest on New York's path through history.